Astrotometry Log. It is October the 28th, 2012. It's approximately 0850 UTC at the time of this recording. This is an analysis of the recent earthquake south of Masset, Canada in British Columbia. And this quake happened at 304 UTC. And it was approximately 17.5 kilometers deep. It's a fairly shallow quake. And I was preparing a watch for this particular coronal hall. I noticed that it was unusually far north. And I was expecting more up towards Alaska, but I hadn't done the watch yet because the solar wind, I didn't expect to come until well, about 36 hours from now. And you can see, this is sort of anomalous because the solar wind hasn't been detected yet. It's been fairly steady. But there was uh, an associated X-ray spike after an extended period of very, very calm activity. And this is an old pattern that identified on the downside of the last solar cycle. And I will put a link in the comments where you can go to coreweather.com and read the previous uh, phenomenon that I had originally uh, identified with these events. And I think we're getting back into that part of the solar cycle again where we might see more of what I call these warm finger effects after a long period of lull in the x-ray activity, a sudden spike of just about any size uh, is enough to trigger a seismic event. And something is odd on the SOHO site right now. Um, for some reason, the a lot of the SOHO monitors have frozen just after uh, 1.30 UTC today. So there's no data on SOHO for the proton monitor. And these instruments usually have a quick update, but the, the high resolution here of the uh, higher frequency part of it did show a couple of anomalous spikes, and these are fairly unusual spikes. Um, but here again, right at 1.30 approximately, uh, the data is cut off. And so I don't know if this data will get filled in later, but it's kind of strange considering that the LASCO feed has been frozen since the 26th. And so two days ago, there was an interesting coronal mass ejection, and uh, mid-ejection, the live SOHO feed from the site was frozen. This may just be a coincidence, but I was watching this uh, coronal hole. Uh, this is the SDO site, and I'll go ahead and show you the formation of the hole. You usually don't see a hole like this form as it is uh, coming across the face of the sun. It's usually already present when it's coming over the limb. And that's one of the reasons I wasn't expecting the solar wind right away. And so it's a fairly small hole, but it has associated with it this interesting strip, which is about a day away. And so we could see if this is, if this is indeed the part that associates with the uh, BC quake, then we could see this activity probably around the same, near the same latitude. You see you've got this coronal hole, which is um, fractal with this disturbance here. So this is the, the center of this disturbance right here where it goes in. And then you've got this other one uh, that is more centered uh, probably right around here. So we could see in a couple days uh, some aftershocks from this. Uh, the form of this changes and the solar monitor site 
has a higher contrast where you can see uh, the contrast better. But in either case, um, it looks like there may have been some type of unusual disturbance, uh, possibly from this ejection if you watch right here, um, back on the 26th. You can see right there, watch right here, we've got this ejection coming out here. And also, on the 24th, there was an ejection for this region right here. There's been some lower frequency activity that didn't produce large X-ray spikes, I suspect because of the permeability of the space. Because the activity has been of such a low frequency, I'm suspecting that the permeability, the texture of the space between, if you model it three-dimensionally, the Earth and the Sun um, is of a nature that is impeding the higher frequency uh, energy. And so there's a, the temper is, is higher, perhaps. That's just a theory. But I'm going to go ahead and keep watching this area since I'm not certain that this is the hole that associates with that quake. It's fairly, I mean, if you look at the, the shape of it, if you look at the form of it, uh, these is the tips of the peaks of the mountains. It does sort of fall into that pattern. And an informal watch for this area right here. This may not be over my 6.5 threshold that I usually do forecasts for, but since the smaller hole associated with the 7.7 .7 quake at this time, I'm going to go ahead and do an informal watch for uh, this particular corona hole, which is not necessarily something I would usually do a watch for. Its proximity to the active region is far enough away and it seems to be of low enough contrast that it might not associate with a quake over 6.5. But since the higher frequency energy has been a lot lower, which is one of the considerations, this could be a problem for uh, Southern Ireland region around 40 degrees south. In other news, Hurricane Sandy, which associated with one of these disturbances, is a very unusual event because of this coming together of these two features. Now, if you look at the wall here, this is the lash of the solar disturbance right here. And in this water vapor image, you can see the stark division here. It goes from the, the highest part, point on the scale uh, down to nominal in just a very, very small space. And so you, there's a very strange disturbance. This is the lash of it right here. I'm not expecting uh, much out of it. I didn't get to see what happened after this. And so if there was a bigger disturbance or if there was another larger ejection that came from up here, really can't tell. So I don't know about this missing data. Not surprising considering that the phenomenon seems to be so interesting. So that's all for now. Um, again, I want to mention that this watch is not appropriate for any sort of emergency management. It's not intended to prompt emergency response. And thank you for watching.